what's up guys the boys are travel come back to my youtube channel it is the forex so today guys i uh, have something new for you it's an update mmc footprint update so <clears throat> okay this is what's happening so um i've been told that there's what we call mmc dynamic approach so i wrote mmc dynamic footprint so basically it's like dynamic approach which means um the way we used to approach the footprint it's now different so number one um the question is what has changed so um according to what i've heard from people is that uh dio Barandi does not focus on the footprint line anymore which means he does not draw the footprint line anymore so which means he ignores it so this also means in other words he does not look for an m pattern or w pattern in order for him to trade uh, a divergence right so which means his divergence are only based from trades that come from a layer line so this is the example that i'm showing you this is a footprint line for those who do not understand what a footprint line is it is an m pattern or w pattern right so it's an m pattern when the market is selling and w when the market is buy so now i'm going to illustrate which one is a, a layer line and a footprint line so the red line here represents a footprint line so that's what i mean that the operandi does not look for a footprint line anymore okay um he only looks at the layer line and waits for it to break out and look for um divergence so i've tested it and um uh, yeah in the group chat we've been we've been killing it and since i found out uh, it's like i'm getting more signals now because the market does not always make m patterns and w patterns so it makes the footprint become irrelevant for us to use in the market hence the market changes every day so now this is the blue line is the layer line so that's the only line that we're gonna use and now as i'm illustrating there on the whiteboard i'm going to crush out the footprint line so which means we're no longer focusing on the footprint line So, um, another thing, an important thing that you're supposed to know, guys, it's not every, not every uh, market condition, like, is called a layer line, which means the criteria that we have to mark out for us to call it a layer line. So, it does not mean when the market has dropped, you're supposed to draw a line anyhow. So, there are rules for us to be drawing uh, the the layer line of which it has higher highs and lower lows or lower lows and lower highs right so that 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 is a complete uh downtrend or an uptrend that marks up to be called a layer line so number two we focus on the layer line only so which means when you approach now the market you are going to look for a layer line the first thing that you are going to look at it is not a footprint line but it is a layer line so now we have to adjust to this new uh, approach which is also known as the dynamic approach so third thing is that we look for a layer line breakout so we're gonna wait for a layer line to break out and there's something there's a tip i'm gonna give you so if you watch this video till the end so i'm gonna give you a tip how you make your entries and how do you make sure that the market is gonna go in that direction so there's a there's a signal that comes out right when i say signal i don't mean what you're thinking i mean like there's a hint so i'm going to illustrate so you will see what i use so i'm giving you examples of what um dynamic approach looks like so on a diagram um 
I'm gonna show you how it looks like but first you need to understand the higher highs and lower lows if you guys don't understand this it won't make sense first of all we need to understand what time frame are we working on which time frame do we look uh look for okay when we're trading with this dynamic approach basically it is any time frame but i prefer you know your five minute i prefer 15 minute i also prefer 30 minutes and one hour these are the top four time frames that i work on and i've traded on all of them and i and I, i'm starting to see uh results so with the knowledge that i have right now with the mmc footprint i will update you guys with how my progress is and yeah to be honest i was stuck with the mmc footprint for quite some time that's why sometimes you don't see me post anything because i don't have anything to show you know with the mmc footprint but lately i've been having great results but right now i haven't jumped yet on my real account with mmc footprint hence it's really risky and i'm um, just waiting to you know to reach my target with my demo and then when i'm done with it that's when i can start to jump into my live account but notice on my real account i haven't jumped into another strategy on my other account so i'm using like technical analysis pure press action but uh, jumping back to mmc footprint i will go back you know once i see that uh, there is really progress there is progress but once i reach my target for example if i make 100k on demo i will make 100k on real account so some people don't even reach their targets on demo and they expect to become successful in their real accounts of which sometimes i feel like it doesn't make sense and many mentors they make it seem like it's a wrong thing for somebody to be trading a demo account of which you you, you have no loss so many people jump into real accounts because they are you know they are trading out of emotions trying to cover their debts or whatever as an emergency so that's why they rush to them to jump into the markets and you're supposed to trade knowing that you're not trading to buy anything anytime soon just trade to grow your money and that's it yeah so i hope you're reading what i'm writing over there so um yeah what i wrote there is that um uh, a downtrend and uptrend consists of lower lows and lower highs so that's what i wrote right there so yeah so lh will represent lower high and ll will present lower low so for those who don't know lower low is because it is a low that is lower than the previous lower high and then as it goes down it becomes lower low lower low and then the other one on top it's called lower high so from the the ones on top they are lower high and the ones on the bottom they are lower low this only appears in a series of downtrend i mean this series appears when the market is going to the downside it creates series of lower lows and lower highs so on an uptrend it's different so we have a higher high and a higher low so now the market remember when what confirms confirms a lower low and a lower high or a higher low and a higher high right it is when the market breaks the previous turning point all right so if it does not break at previous turning point it is not yet confirmed as a lower high or higher high or lower low okay so we only confirm when it when it surpasses the previous high or low so this is a higher high and then this is a higher low um so 
in this video i covered everything i made sure i covered everything for those who want to know how to leverage i covered it and for those who want to learn basic this is the beginning you know this is where you have to start this video is basically everything everything that you want to know about mmc footprint especially the updated one dynamic approach this is it this is how you start so this video if you're asking me which video must you watch if this is your first time this is the video but i'm not saying you cannot use the old footprint it still works so the difference is that with this one you don't use pokeball and uh which means as soon as the market breaks the layer line the first divergence is your signal it doesn't matter whether it's it's on the level of a poker bar or not so you just have to go in and if you're asking me which one is the safest honestly it depends on your risk appetite i can't say there's a safest way of trading MMC footprint. With the safest way I've always explained. If you have a thousand bucks or whatever money that you have, if you have money to trade, right? And you're putting money aside and you're saying, this is money for me to trade. If that money can be divided into five, if you divide it into five and it's still not enough for each account, then that money is not enough. But if it's a thousand, for example, you divide it into five accounts, you're going to take 200 each account. Okay, try to grow one account, all right, until your desired target. I don't know what's your target. Maybe your target is 200 to 5,000, flipping 200 to 5,000 rand, all right? So you you're gonna trade these five accounts until which means you're not gonna make a withdrawal until you reach five thousand okay it doesn't matter how you're gonna make the five thousand it, it doesn't matter if you're gonna make one thousand on each account or two hundred uh five thousand from one account it doesn't matter but all your profits excluding your deposit should make up to five thousand and that's when you can start withdrawing and then after you draw you fund again and then you set another target so if your target was five thousand double it up the next time make it ten thousand after ten thousand you go to twenty thousand after twenty thousand you go to forty thousand you know and it goes on and on and on but um, I realized uh, last year on the Telegram group, I wasn't much involved because I, I started losing hope on MMC Footprint. That's why I jumped into, I jumped back to SMC, you know, and other strategies. But as soon as I jumped back there, I said, okay, let me humble myself and, you know, interact with people there. And as I was interacting, I was learning from them and i was learning from them on the telegram and it was amazing and it opened up my my eyes until someone said hey um if operandi does not trade this way and what made me to find out that operandi trade different is that every time when uh, operandi posts on instagram i always go back to the market and compare how did he find his entries that's when um I started looking for a footprint line and I didn't find the footprint line. And then I told them on the group, I said, guys, Operandi might be using a different strategy. Then somebody clarified and said, no, he uses MMC footprint. He just, he, he doesn't focus on footprint line. He focus on layer line only. Then I was like, good shot. I tried it. And guess what? My first uh, practice trading, it was on profits and i shared on the group it, and i remember very well clear it was usd card i was trading usd card so this other guy said okay now hence we know that we've shifted mmc footprint to another dimension now we have to you have to find your favorite pair 
you have to find your favorite pair and master it you know if there's no signal don't force yourself if you're trading gold trade gold if you're trading usd cad trade usd cad if you're trading nasdaq trade nasdaq so even now i'm still not sure what pair i'm gonna focus on because my heart is 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 you know my heart is going for nasdaq and gold so i don't know so my other my other thoughts are like i should trade both but i'm trying my best so that i can trade the one and one cannot be nasdaq it cannot be nasdaq because i know nasdaq is really crazy but at the same time it can pay but my main it will be those two at least two guys i'm gonna make it two you know why because i'm gonna make it on separate accounts so that i don't confuse myself so one account will be gold and nasdaq okay so moving on so this is uh the dynamic footprint right examples of dynamic approach now this is the layer line so the first thing you have to look at is if that trend does it have lower lows and lower highs yes then you draw your footprint line and then when it breaks out now when you find the divergence you don't enter immediately please guys listen wait for the candle okay for a buy candle to appear until it closes right you wait for the candle to close now the candle have to be it has to be different than other candles which means other candles will be short it will so other candles will show you that the market is not moving but this candle when it appears guys most of the times when the market breaks out it breaks out sh showing us momentum so there's momentum that appears showing us a long candle and then after that you're gonna enter where the long candle closes so this signifies that the market is about to shoot skyrocket to the upside so you have to focus on that so if you enter and this helps you to minimize your losses because sometimes when the market breaks out and gives you a divergence it still drops to the downside and it doesn't even buy because there's no momentum for buy okay it's just a fake out so there's what we call a fake breakout okay so that's what i'm talking about so that's how we avoid fake breakout so most of the time fake breakouts do not have momentum candlesticks so when i say momentum guys i hope you understand what i mean i mean the signs to show us that the market will go to the upside strongly so in this video the, the 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 only example i have is a buying example is because this video is already long and uh i don't want to make it too long so which means when i get a selling setup next time i'll try as much as possible to show you my practice account while i'm leveraging so what i'm practicing right now uh, the reason the, uh, another reason why i'm not jumping into a real account is because i want to learn how to leverage like leverage 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 until i reach my target so i've only reached my target like once or twice when i'm trading footprint is um and my biggest was from 200 to 10,000 in one single trade I, I think one of the videos on my youtube i did share with you guys and i did it once and i miss those days because yo guys the footprint something was was not right and i had to fix it but yeah so we'll talk about leveraging on the live market so let's we're gonna jump into the live market soon and uh 
yeah so if you enjoyed this video so far and you're learning make sure that you subscribe so let's go let's go subscribe guys like share and comment so guys some of you i ask you to like you don't like um the reason why i ask you to like my videos is because youtube when you like my videos it makes my videos to be viral so that other people can also learn okay so that they do not miss out for example some you find that um they did not click the notification bell so when i drop a video they don't get to see that so, but when you like it appears on people's you know uh page home page so yeah thank you guys thank you um let's let's do it it's only free guys just subscribe and like it's free and yeah thanks guys let's let's get into this um right now jumping into the live markets all right now we we are on nasdaq um so nasdaq i saw this opportunity i have missed and uh I didn't even tell them on the group because we already missed it already because we are focusing on gold we've been trading gold and um made some profits but then i closed and then um i closed because of i had reached my target on my practice account um daily target um so so my my, my goal is not to flip it uh you know into massive amounts in one time because i know gold can be crazy so what i did is that um i, I reached a daily target uh and then i closed and then the market started selling because we had a buy signal so yeah this is the opportunity that i saw on nasdaq that we have missed and i know people love trading nasdaq and i know why it's because nasdaq can really flip accounts even more than gold gold is nothing nasdaq can oh my god if you go to operandi's uh instagram you'll see the results of of nasdaq they are they are far better than um gold uh, results so first thing that i do is to look for a a layer line so notice how the market is moving here or uh, towards the downside right so the market um wait let me so here i was looking for my stochastic oscillator okay yeah now that you can see the market properly so the market moved down and it went up moved down went up so when i say higher highs and lower lows basically the market has to make some zigzag type of a pattern going to the downside or to the upside but in this case it's downside so it must show us a clear zigzag like you don't have to squint in order for you to see it it has to be obvious so that's why i drew my layer line like that so regarding how to draw a layer line um you're supposed to draw your trend line from the wicks so you don't have to draw from the body of the candles even the wicks represents that the, the the price was once there and it left that's why it's there so now here as you can see the market broke out to the upside so when the market breaks to the upside your focus is your last turning point before the market broke out so i'm going to point it out now this is the last turning point before the market broke to the upside so this is the one that we focus on uh, using it in conjunction with our stochastic oscillator in order for us to look for a divergence so we're gonna use this one to look for a divergence so all the new people um who are learning this now please take note this is what you have to look for 
nothing else so everything that i'm teaching in this video this is it you have to follow it the way it is and don't try to tweak it or change it now the reason why i said we don't look at poker bar we look at your first divergence is because not all divergences go back to your poker bar so which means you're gonna miss signals so what i did is that the way i have learned is that you just have to take it the way it is okay just like here look at nasdaq how it's gonna move so this is our first entry so this is our first entry and you wait for the candle to go to the upside never mind the market that is moving right now because um I'm, i do not know how to use this replay slowly um yeah but i'll figure it out so you're gonna see where i'm gonna put a horizontal trend line so that uh you can be able to see where do we enter our first entry but if you've been following from the start of the video you will understand what i'm talking about so you will wait for the candle to show us a bullish momentum so uh, i think i was showing you guys how you enter uh the second entry so the second entry right first of all you have to wait for the market to go up so looking at the stochastic it has to go overboard right after it goes overboard it will come back down and become oversold now when it's oversold guys when it's oversold it doesn't matter where as long as it went up and came down again it has to be overbought and cross over outside 80 come back down and cross below 20 the moment it crosses below 20 that's your second entry but hence you, hence you can see in this video um uh, it disappeared okay now you see where i put my horizontal line this is my first entry i enter after that bullish candle why because it's showing me momentum so that i know that okay the market is ready to go to the upside so when you enter there the market comes back down what do you do you hold and i'm going to show you how do you know if you're supposed to hold your trade or close your trade so the market came back and gave us a little bit of a drawdown just to scare us a little bit but we are not moved by that why because we still have four other accounts remaining in case this one blows so that's why you have to divide your account into five so oh yeah here's the stochastic so you can see from the second entry which is the second horizontal line right the red line so if you can check on the stochastic there, there was no uh stochastic that was overbought until this level uh, it kept disappearing while i was recording on my laptop so yeah but i hope you understand what i mean so the moment it comes down and becomes overbought or oversold and it it should cross there that's your second entry um i'll make a separate video just on how to enter you know an entry while leveraging um this is very important so remember your first trade your first entry divergence your second entry we don't use divergence but you wait for the market to the stochastic to become overbought and then go go down again to become oversold okay now it must cross below 20 so when it's below 20 that's when you now enter a second yeah that's what i'm talking about can you see this was the first uh over sold so why did i enter there i waited for the market to give me a long candle a bit so if you can compare those can that candle with the others it's quite long after the crossover that happened so that's that's where you 
put your entry so what you can do on your second entry your first entry you do not go crazy because the market can go against you a little bit your second entry this is when now you can risk everything you have your second entry you can risk everything you have and you gonna leverage all the way where the market is going crazy yeah that's the end guys my name is sir trevor thank you for watching don't forget to like share comment and subscribe love you guys cheers see you on the next one good luck